Today in the news, we got some end of life GPUs, some speedy memory, and another Intel problem. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. In a pretty interesting turn of events, it looks like they're already discontinuing the RX 5700 series. Now the actual GPU line, but their reference design is already in end of life. According to sources that spoke with Cal Kotland, AMD stopped production on both the reference RX 5700 and the XT version in favor of the custom designs that will hit the market in a week or so. I understand the decision since customer cards will most likely be priced at or very close to the reference model. Models, but really, removing a card design from production after a month of it being on the market, that's never been seen before. PowerColor already confirmed that their custom designs for the RX 5700 XT will start at $399, but other companies like ASUS will probably push the price higher on the custom design. The RX 5700 XT Strix OC is currently in pre-order on Overclock UK's website for $499. That's about $100 more than the reference design prices. At least, you you have a choice. It is still unclear if the anniversary edition will be an end of life, but I don't see why not. As we discussed in the previous episode, ASUS's Strix cards is already clocked higher than AMD's anniversary edition, and discontinuing it might give it more, a more uh, exclusive feel. I know that blower cards are pretty much all hated, but there are certain circumstances where this design actually fits a build better since it doesn't displace the hot air back into the case at all. Whether a board partner will release a blower design is still a mystery, but if you really wanted to have a dented GPU, it's now or never, boys. Moving on, let's hop onto some storage news. With AMD unleashing PCIe Gen 4 to the masses, we already started seeing blazing fast PCIe Gen 4 SSDs make their way into the market. We used to be limited, although that's a strong word for it, by the speeds of PCIe Gen 3, which equated to the drives reaching 3.5 gigabytes per second on reads and around 3 gigabytes on writes on four lanes. With PCIe Gen 4 combined with a Fizon E16 controller, we can reach speeds of up to 5 gigabytes per second on read and 4.4 uh, in write, like on this gigabyte Aorus drive. But Fizon considers this controller to be mid-range. Early next year, they plan on having the E18 controllers ready for the masses. These controllers are supposed to reach speeds of up to 7 gigabytes per second in read or write. That's really close to the theoretical limit of PCIe Gen 4 on four lanes, which is 7.9 gigabytes per second. If it continues that way, we'll need PCIe Gen 5 ready for next year. Or will we, because in gaming, it hardly makes a difference. PC Games N benchmarked two NVMe drives a few days ago, one with vastly superior speeds, and there were literally no differences. And even technologies like Intel's 3D X Point don't really benefit us in the slightest. So while the speeds might increase, if you're in the market for an SSD, I don't think buying the quickest drive is necessarily the smartest choice if you're into gaming only. Getting something like an Intel 660p will bring you the speed you need at a reasonable price. Unless you like to speed run transferring a whole drive into another. Don't do that, that's not a speed run, that's not a thing. Next up with AMD, I just wanted to correct or confirm something that we talked about on Monday's video. The story was about Gigabyte removing PCIe Gen 4 on boards that supported it with their latest BIOS update. We weren't sure if the removal of the feature was due to the microcode update from AMD or the updated BIOS from Gigabyte. Well, turns out it was AMD. So if you have an X470 or lower board, it looks like you will have to say goodbye to PCIe Gen 4 if you update to the latest BIOS that contains the microcode. Unless the manufacturers have have a way to circumvent that, but I highly doubt it. Moving on, it looks like Intel is plagued yet again with a new vulnerability called SwapGS or Swapagus. Actually, it was found about a year ago and was privately reported to Intel to implement a fix. It's once again a side channel vulnerability attack that actually bypasses all of the defenses for Spectre and Meltdown type attacks. Now, don't worry, if you've updated your OS in the last month or so, Microsoft included a fix for it in a patch Tuesday last month. But how much performance will we lose this time? According to Pharonix, it seems to be largely a 1% or less performance hit, with select exceptions at around 5%, so not nearly as bad as the other Spectre, Meltdown, Foreshadow, or Zombie Load mitigations. But this is on top of all that we've seen since January of 2018. So yeah, it doesn't take away that much, but the damage is starting to pile up. 
All right, let's move on to rate that custom RX 5700. We got some new shiny cards that look pretty awesome. First is the MSI Evoque 5700 XT with a champagne slash gold aluminum shroud. We can't really see the full card since MSI only sent part of it uh, to different news outlets, but it kind of reminds me of an RTX card shroud with the color of a Titan V. Another one that was revealed two days ago is the XFX Thick 2. That one looks pretty good from the front, at least much better than the the other XFX card that we took a look at. The back is a different story though with a throwback to old school muscle cars. It's a shame that uh, it's not going to be seen that much once installed though. One thing I've noticed is that most of the new cards come in a two and a half slot config. I mean if XFX was able to cool a 290X back in the days, which coincidentally has a TDP of 290 watts, but if they were able to do that at two slots, I don't know why the trend is moving towards two and a half slots. For most people it's a non-issue since they'll likely have nothing plugged right next to the uh, graphics card, but for others like me, it might be a conflict. Power to the masses, I guess. Moving on, today's comment question is a fun one. Have you ever nerd rage quit anything? Well, if we're strictly talking games, yeah, yeah I did. On one game in particular, and I used to just turn off the console before the game finished like a sore loser. The game was Mario the Striker, and honestly, I should have just taken the L, because anytime that game is mentioned with my friends nowadays, they all bring it up. What about you guys? Any games you ever did that on? Alright guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. If you got any questions or comments or things you'd like me to touch on, let me know down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.